and welcome to Comfort.ai, making artificial intelligence your comfort zone. In this episode of Ethics Talks, we have an amazing guest called Mike Burke. Um, and I'm very excited for this interview as well. Hi, Mike. Oh, kia ora. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my, absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. So um, let's start with, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? I know you do a lot of things, so... Yeah, um, so I do do a lot of things. It does revolve around business. So I suppose there's three areas that I predominantly spend my day um, and they all hinder, uh, hinder around uh, business and business growth in a sustainable way. So I work with uh, a lot of startups. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a, especially a fintech investment um, fund in Bend, so where we work on helping uh, fintech startups uh, become match fit. Mm -hmm. You know, so they might come with a seed of an idea, and I will work with them to make sure that they can work with that idea, find exactly what their MVP is. If that's uh, part of that, is helping raise capital, yeah. um, getting started, and, and starting to hit milestones along the way. Um, I also work with a lot of SMEs, uh, small, medium-sized businesses, typically one to 20 million, 30 million in, in revenue. Uh, and what we do there is we help um, those companies scale and scale more effortlessly. Uh, they can be very traditional businesses, uh, so they're not solely in technology either. Uh, and lastly, uh, we do corporate venturing as a service. So we work with very large companies that are probably uh, topping out on their growth cliffs. And we do Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 innovation, where we might start, rather than uh, new products or new product development, we might do new business. Right. Uh, so we work with all those. And one is a personal investment fund. One is we have a... a a buy and hold fund called the Sustainable Lifestyle Fund. I'm just saying that now because this might become relevant, I think. Yeah. And uh, Point 16. And so Point 16 is our growth consultancy, mainly for corporate venturing. Yes, a lot of things you're saying um, are quite relevant um, here. So thank you so much. Uh, before I jump into uh, kind of specific areas, there mm -hmm. are two questions that I always ask my okay. guests up front. Sure. Um, and that's just to make sure that, one, we're on, on the same page when we're talking about these topics, and two, uh, for all the viewers to know that everyone can have different definitions of these concepts. So the first question is, uh, what's your definition of ethics? Oh, okay. So ethics to me is the process or the practice of, uh, of building sustainability, um, human to human. In, in my opinion, I think it's how we should hold ourselves, um, how we should act, react um, and treat people that build trust uh, so we can grow together. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, sustainability isn't just uh, greenery. Um, sustainability to me is things that can grow a life of their own with as little or, you know, with less and less input. Mm -hmm. from myself or from from people around us so if I take that as a bit of a, a sustainability lens uh, and then ethics is doing that in a way that's going to empower that you know where it's got less and less input but if we're dealing ethically we can uh, start with the foundation of trust and then perform more easily over time that would be my take on on ethical behavior rather than looking at every behavior or every interaction as is that or was that ethical? Mm. I think if we sort of take a little bit uh, of a slant further. And it, so to give the opposite of that, I think if you weren't uh, uh, practicing or interacting with people uh, that create a sustainable outcome, you're probably acting unethically. I see. Okay, that's good. Because I was, I, when, I, when you said sustainability, the first thing that came into my mind was also greenery. Yeah. But I think what you're talking about is, is so you set something up, you know, what we, I, am I getting this right? So you yeah. set something up with, you know, strong enough foundations so that it can grow ethically on its own, as opposed to you having to micromanage every 
Yeah, so yeah, so I think ethics is the input. So ethics is what you're working on. And so are you ethically putting something into place? But for whether it be your business, your home life, or your environment, um, to to live on its own, to grow on its own. So if we take a very, let me give you an example. So if we take old school business, yeah. right? So think 1980s, you know, maybe a Donald Trump back in his day, or <laughs> uh, Gordon Gecko. The, you know, these people were very, very successful, but they worked extremely hard. And, you know, you know, salespeople predominantly back in those days, they would have worked really, really hard every single day, every single month, mm. you know, and the practice, you know, if they were being unethical, um, the, their practice probably wasn't sustainable mm. because they would either burn bridges or uh, ruin relationships um, or try and be a little bit too greedy. So every month they'd have to start the whole process again and, yeah. and, uh, and so they were only as good as the deals that they were making. Mm. However, if we take a bit more of an ethical approach and, and look at sustainable business, you know, what I might do is build trust with a supplier or build trust with a customer or build trust with staff by sharing a little bit more, by being a little bit more transparent, uh, by working for the strategy rather than working for an individual. Mm. And as long as we're interacting with people uh, ethically to build trust, what you'll actually find is the long-term performance of that business, mm. not only does it grow, but it grows with less effort. Yeah. Okay. And so that's yeah. kind of the take, you know, if that makes sense around from a sustainability yeah. point of view, and so to come back to your original question, I think ethics is the input for sustainable practicing being the output. Mm. No, that's a that's a really good good point. I don't think we've had this definition of ethics before. It's mainly like ethics and business, which is great. Um, and so the second question I always ask all the guests is, what's your definition of artificial intelligence? Yeah. Um, so AI to me, this is a really tough, like, and all I want to do is Google it, uh, <laughs> you know, because normally they've got a really succinct way of, um, of, of defining it without, you know, excluding a lot of people. My take on artificial intelligence uh, with my limited exposure to AI is it, it's the collection of data um, to be analysed for the purpose of, uh, identifying insight mm -hmm. and identifying a decision mm -hmm. or identifying or implementing an action. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, and you know, the three steps of that is collect all the data and review it. Uh, you know, have some training, you know, to make sure that the AI or the practice um, knows what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's an outcome. Yeah. You know, and that could be, uh, you know, an insight, a decision or an action. Yeah. I think that's a great definition. That's a very practical definition. Do you, it should be so in Google. Just yeah, throw it that, should throw be in Google. Google. Yeah, let's have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So that's that's great. But um, as I've said before in this channel, the intention isn't just to focus on, especially with ethics talks, the intention isn't just to focus on AI, but just the role that ethics plays in general in, in different areas that AI interacts with. Um, so there were a couple of things that you mentioned and, you know, knowing your background, there are a couple yeah. of areas that I would like us to kind of dive a bit deeper. Okay, sure. Um, one is investments. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is leadership. Okay. So I would really like us to kind of dive a bit deeper into what ethics means in each of these two. Well, we can start with whichever one that you like. Oh, uh, it doesn't bother me. I think um, I, I might spend a little bit more time on leadership. But so I'll, I'll start with investments. I think, I mean, ethics and in investments is, uh, I mean, it, it, it's quite simple in my personal opinion, because I think um, as an investor, uh, you, if you take that approach of how do I make my life easier as an investor over a longer period of time, how do I make my role as an investor more sustainable? Mm -hmm. um, the inputs that I want to do there, I think upfront is uh, just being transparent and being as honest as possible. Um, I really love it where um, I'm working with a, a new founder or a, a, a company, a very established company who is looking for either investment or uh, their own exit. Um, and before you, you know, you go through the narration, cards are laid on the table. Mm. 
Mm. That to me is extremely ethical and, and a really good sign of sustainable business in the short term. Um, and, and what I mean by that is it's, you know, if I let them know, hey, this is my investment strategy, this is the decisioning that I'm going to make, this might be the, the investment size that I'm looking for right now. Um, and I really appreciate when um, someone who's looking for investment will act the same way. Mm. Um, I don't I don't need them to do that, but it's it's a really good sign of, in, in my world, like 21st century ethics, where people aren't trying to trade off each other or information is power. Um, because I think a much more ethical or sustainable relationship is one where it's like, here's my circle, this is what I'm looking for. And, you know, the counterparty is, this is my circle, this is what I'm looking for. And if there isn't an overlap, great. You know, we're not wasting anybody's time. I wish you all the best. Mm. Uh, if I know someone in my network who, who does overlap with your circle, I will make a connection or give a connection because it's good business as well. Um, but it's much easier to find that out in the first five minutes yeah. than it is to find it out three months later. Um, the other reason why I like about that is if there is an overlap, we can talk about that or we can talk about what isn't overlapped to figure out if that's a not negotiable. Mm. And so this sort of ethical being transparent and open with information, um, now it might not be, you know, IP level, but, you know, yeah. just in terms of what, what does a good deal look like, uh, this to me makes the relationship a lot more sustainable. Mm. Um, also, my name as an investor or our company's name as an investor, you know, it's going to get out there. The more deals we do or the more interactions we have, you know, that's going to create an impression. And I would love that to be a lot more sustainable. So if I'm connect as ethically as possible, as soon as possible, mm. um, to me, uh, that's what, I would like to see, or that's my personal take on ethics and investment. Um, another one around uh, being ethical is paying a fair price. Uh, this is quite significant. Uh, with our fund, the Sustainable Lifestyle Fund, deals aren't done uh, by price. Deals are done with the health and um, of the company that we're looking at versus our investment strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think fair price is one of the most sustainable things that we can do, um, whether you're a buyer or a seller, finding that fair price and finding that uh, openly and honestly um, that is very defendable is, is uh, at SLF probably our true north. So that's it from an investment point of view. I think from a leadership point of view, there is a very big trend, I think, happening, or it's been happening for probably 20 years, but I think it's happening to a point there's so much data now that you, we can actually collate that and find the trend. Um, I talked about Gordon Gekko and Donald Trump before about being unethical to win early, but maybe not over the long term. Yeah. I, we call it here, we call that capitalism 1.0, and we like to talk about capitalism 2.0. Mm -hmm. And... So business has changed a lot. I think business after World War II uh, was this command and control, eight predominantly white men, you know, sitting in an office for four hours once a month mm -hmm. and command and control what everyone's going to do in the business yeah. over the next four weeks. You know, these humans don't have a choice. It's you've got to do this, you know, whether you're in sales or whether you're in the factory or whether you work in accounts. And then they would do that task, roll that back up, and then those uh, white guys would make that decision again. With communication and technology, we don't have um, we don't have the luxury, or we have the opportunity that we don't need to wait for a month anymore. Like yeah. things happen so quickly, so uh, what? Instead of having this command and control, bottom up, top down sort of uh, hierarchy, what we're finding works really, really well and is sustainable in business is this connected social network, you know, of diverse skill sets, diverse experiences, diverse wants and needs. And if you can get the social network together behind a common goal mm -hmm. and just let them do their thing. Yeah. Um, I find that you're going to have a much easier, much more sustainable and growing business mm -hmm. in the medium and the long term. 
obviously personality aside and you you know it's not as simple as that yeah. um, but that to me is ethical so a couple of things there so one is um, working for the business rather than working for the boss yeah and I think that's quite a fundamental difference because we can all get behind the business the business doesn't change its mind from morning to afternoon doesn't have temper tantrums, um, you know, might not react d- uh, differently to certain things, or like the weather. Um, so I think that that is one. I think, um, you know, being transparent and being consistent uh, with, with, with how you are with people. Um, and again, being fair, uh, being fair with, with pricing, you know, being fair with income, being fair with reward, being fair with recognition. That's good. So um, there are themes that I picked up okay. in both of them that you've talked about, which which are quite interesting. So um, transparency seems to be the biggest one. And I agree, okay. like if you want to be ethical, you need to be transparent or ethically transparent, as we say as well. Yeah. Um, trust is an interesting thing. So we're going to dive into that one. Okay. Sustainability, um, cooperate versus... Um, Compete, Compete. control. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then, you know, as a leader, you need to be consistent. Um, kind of, you know, your, your people need to kind of understand where they stand with you. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think, I mean, it, you talked about being a parent. So um, you know, you don't, uh, or you probably do if you know me. I have a two-year-old and a three-year-old, right? So I'm very early in my parenting journey. Um and but I've been a leader of people for 22, 23 years, yeah. um, and there are a lot of commonalities there. And so to talk about the consistent word, mm-hmm. one of the things I used to talk about when when getting a new leader, the first thing I would ask them is uh, a, a new leader is on one end of the spectrum, you know, there is the really strict, really controlling boss or leader you know, that is on your case if you're late by a minute um, versus uh, a very loose and fun and, oh, easy going, oh, you've turned up at 12.30, at least you're here, you know, um, type of leader. And my question is always, if that's the spectrum, where is the perfect leader? Yeah. And you always get some sort of in the centre bend one way or another, and it's probably more a reflection of what kind of leader they want rather than what kind of leader they want to be. Um but it's always a trick question. It, it never, it doesn't matter where on the spectrum you are as a leader. It's that you remain consistent in that because you can be strict or you can be loose or you can be a balance of both. But as long as you're consistent when you're strict and as long as you're consistent when you're loose, um, because we as humans, we, we appreciate that consistency. So we want to know um, ahead of time, because change is really, really scary. It, it uh, issues fight or flight. And as a leader, if you can provide safety around that, you're going to have a much quicker engagement. Mm. And it's the same, I think, with children. So I think uh, one of the biggest things being a mindful parent is about being consistent. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So if my son comes to me to ask for a question or he comes to me with the remote to go, hey, I want to watch television, um, you know, making sure that I react the same way. So he always feel comfortable. He can. He always feels comfortable to come to me. Yeah. So that reaction might not be always. Hey, yes, let's uh, turn the TV on. Or am I not? No, not right now. It might be. Hi, Hudson. How are you? What have you got there? Mm-hmm. But at least he now knows that I'm gonna give him the same response every single time. Yeah. So that's why consistency to me. Um, is so big is because it gives safety to other people. Yeah. So I think that you kind of like answered my next question as well, because one of the words you've used is trust. Yeah. So the question, my next question was going to be, how do you build trust? So obviously consistency is part of it, because then otherwise people won't trust. You know, if they can't, yep. if they don't know what kind of reaction they're going to get from you, they can't really trust you. What are other ways that you can build trust, either as a leader or a parent or an investor? Yeah. Um, okay, good question. I think um, I, I think the big one is know who you are and 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 be consistent with that and and not be afraid to share what that is. Yeah. Um, my big thing, my personal thing, is transparency. Mm. Um, I I don't think well, knowledge is power, but I will be much more powerful, or we will be much more powerful if we share that knowledge within mm. our entire community. Um, 
you know, me having knowledge and, and not willing to share that, um, the power stops at me. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I see that as, uh, my success doesn't come because other people fail. Mm. You, you know, and my success comes if I can make as many other people that I'm connected to as successful as they can be. Mm. So I think with transparency, you know, there is a level because I also don't want to pass burden on, but it's about having that conversation and, and saying, look, you know, um, you know, how much information do you want to know? being comfortable sharing it, making sure that it's shared at the right level as well. Like um, I can be quite disruptive if I go to one of our companies and go, oh, you know, so I'm thinking about, you know, getting another building, you know, and then people freak out, oh, we're getting another building. Mm -hmm. Like, does that mean we need to double in size? Um, and the answer is, is no, I'm thinking about it. And the reason why I'm talking to you is because I'd love to get your feedback. Yeah. Like, you know, what would we do with another machine? What would we do with, with more space? And is it worth that investment? Um, so getting the right level for me is something that is a work on, you know, that's something that I develop and, and, and work on myself. But I think if my entire community or our entire business network can know what we're doing, what we're working on, why we're doing that, I think we can empower, that can empower people to make more decision, but it also lets them know that, uh, if I'm talking to them, that they're getting the truth and that yeah. they're getting all of it. Uh, and that if they ask a question, they're going to get the honest answer. Yeah. And I think that knowing exactly how, what they're going to get from me as a leader um, is how you build trust mm. or how trust is created. Yeah, that, that's good. Um, that's Thank you. Um, the reason why I ask these and, and the reason why I want to give everyone this exposure to what ethics looks like outside of AI is the fact that I know AI is going to touch so many aspects, if not all of the aspects of life that we deal with. And I'm sure at some point it's going to play a role in, in leadership and investment. And these are some of the really good points that if anyone out there is thinking about building some sort of an automated process or an AI algorithm that's going to um, uh, kind of work in these areas, I think these are the ethical principles that they yeah. should really be thinking about when building well, it was a question I think you had there is, I'm jumping ahead actually, but I think, uh, you know, if you are talking about building algorithms or you're building in a natural language processing piece or, you know, um, I think, you know, having the, you know, would you share your decisioning algorithm? You know, and if you are uncomfortable to share how you came up with the algorithm or what the actual AI is working on and how it's making a decision, yeah, um, I, th that might be a good litmus test. As to, I mean, sure, don't share it for competitive reasons, yeah. you know, um, because you don't want, you know, you might have that and you want to build commerce around that. But it's a it's a nice question because you know, if you aren't willing to share it, why not? And so yeah. because if you're embarrassed because you think it might be a bit unethical to share it, mm. then it's probably... Then it's a, yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. But that's a good point. I mean, you can... Yeah, you're right. A lot of companies, you know, when you, you build an IP, you know, then they're not comfortable sharing it for commercial reasons. Yeah. But um, I think there is still an element of um, letting the customers know or letting the public know how... It, this piece of information, uh, sorry, technology is coming to a conclusion. So what are the inputs? Yep. What are yep. the outputs? And I think that gets to the whole black box conversation in terms of, you know, some sometimes with AI, you don't, kind of don't know where it gets from point A to point B, but then, yep. um, you know, what are the applications of that and where you um, apply that? That's actually a good segue to my next uh, question, which is um, there are a lot of, AI um, developments going on in the yep. world at the moment. Kind of coming back to AI a little bit. Is there anything that's happening that concerns you? Uh, so f yes, um, very much so. And it's because I was on social media yesterday, and something came up. 
Mm. Um, there's a lot of AI and a lot more AI that doesn't concern me and it excites mm. me. And there's a lot of, I'd call it micro AI, you know, uh, predictive text, you know, um, zero and how they use AI. Um, there's opportunity there too. Uh, we have big CNC machines that use artificial intelligence to help us, you know, minimize cost on getting the most cut on an MDF board. So I also want to claim that there's a lot of AI for good. Yeah. Uh, deep fakes scare the living shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw a, um, and the reason why I was on social yesterday and there was a, there must have been something in my algorithm on what I was looking for, uh, but Keanu Reeves um, had a deep, like it was a Matrix promotion yeah. uh, for his new movie. Yeah. Um, and there was a real Keanu and a deep fake Keanu and all, oh, I couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. And the fact that, again, this trust thing that we were talking about, you know, if you have a deep fake that has a celebrity and a celebrity that people trust and, you know, oh, yeah. and now we're talking about AI that creates AI because if a deep fake is sending more new data that, you know, for the fake news term, um, and then that data is being created or, or having a decision somewhere else as well, whether it's human or AI, uh, that's what scares me the most. Yeah, that is. Um, actually, we were talking uh, to our team a while ago, and there's a Tom Cruise, lots of Tom Cruise um, oh, really? fake videos out there. And, um, and the question we were asking was, is it really fake? And so then it kind of hit me that we've gone from a world where we look at stuff and we're like, is it really real? To now saying, is it really fake? And I think that's a really big shift. Yeah, and I mean, that could have an adverse effect as well when someone real says something real, but people, um, yeah. you know, uh, people don't agree with it because um, they assume it's fake. Yeah. Um, that leads to, uh, like, and this is a conversation that I have with my father, um, G'day if you're watching, but you know, you'll know what I'm talking about here is, you know, the, the social algorithms, you know, so, um, you know, my father will play a video, um, a YouTube video mm -hmm. on his television at home while he's cooking dinner. And he just loves it so much because he doesn't need to decide what to watch next mm -hmm. based on things that he's liked or things that he's watched before. Um, he just keeps going and going and going. And I don't even know why I'm using my father as an example. We all do, I do this. I'm a big, big person in this, right? Um, the thing that scares me, I suppose, is when it gets political, mm. you know, and then you go down these uh, political rabbit holes. And, you know, I think, you know, especially over the last sort of five or six years, um, how further and further apart left and right wing are getting yeah. you know and then all of a sudden it's um it doesn't matter what side you're on when you hear a, a claim or a fact or an opinion from the other side it's dismissed mm. because it came on the other side and if we want to grow as a diverse community and really and and sustainably grow because of the diversity mm. Um, the fact that claims are um, dismissed because it came from a diverse uh, group of people, politically, ethically, you yeah. know, ethically, it doesn't culturally doesn't matter. Um, that's going to be really scary. Mm. Um, and I think that's uh, you know an artificial intelligence that I think was created to help people. And you know. Um, my YouTube rabbit holes of um, of motor racing and, and car development uh, thanks them for it. Uh, but again, when that sort of happens politically, I think yeah. it, we're starting to see the early signs of danger. Yeah, good points. Yeah, those I are tend yeah, to make and them. I mean, and I mean, they're here. Oh yeah, they're not sure. they're not in the future. A lot of your robots are coming, or AI is coming. No, it's it's here. This danger is is. Exists oh, yeah. already. And yeah. you're going to see it, you know, um, when you catch up for barbecues or yeah. Christmas dinners or, you know, you see it and, you know, people are, um, are you know, they're dismissing real facts yeah. because um, of someone's background or someone's political belief. Yeah. Yes. Misinformation is. Yeah. And yeah. Um, thank you so much, Mike. Oh, no, my this pleasure. This is, um, I, as with all the guests, um, we can carry on for, I can carry on. Anyone that knows me knows that I can just keep talking and talking oh, and yeah, asking sure. questions about ethics. But um, 
uh, just to wrap up, and, and I do want to point out that you um, also work with fintech startups, as yes, you said. Uh, yeah. Um, and if you're okay, I would really like to have another one of these where we only focus on oh, fintech yeah, and financial industries because I think that's another uh, really interesting element um, that mm. I would really like to dive deep sure. into. Um, but for at this session, my last question and my favorite one that I ask all the guests is, is there anything I haven't asked you that you wanted me to ask you? Uh, no, I... Um... Now you put me on the spot because if it's your favorite question. Um, yeah, that's the point. That's... Yeah, no, like, you know, what are my kids' names? But I managed to leak them in. Um, <laughs> no, I think, um, you know, I don't do a, a lot of these talks, I think. Um, so, you know, knowing what to share, you know, I just sort of get about my business and I, I prefer being a servant to our people. Um, so I don't sort of normally get in front of a camera and, and talk about it. So I don't know if I'm experiencing it or I don't have a message that I want to get across. Um, no, I think your questions were perfect and complete. Yeah? Okay. Oh, yeah. So is there a message that you would like to get across? Like a, one final word or like a sentence, word of wisdom? Uh, uh, no, I think, oh, yeah, okay, so word of wisdom. And I think this is for anybody um, in business or life is just know what you want and then know how to ask for it. Yeah. And that, that's, that's great my advice. Thing. Perfect. That's great Here advice. We Thank you so much. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Uh, thanks, everyone who is listening or watching. Uh, as usual, please let me know if you have any questions for me or for Mike. Uh, Mike has pointed out a few things here um, about investments. So I'm going to get some links to share with sure. the audience if they want to know more. Um, and until the next Ethics Talks, remember, technology can be fun, fashionable, and fabulous.